So I thank God. Uh, the message that God gave us for today is he won't let me drown. He won't let me drown. And we're coming from Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the first and the second verses. And I'm going to read those in the King James Version of the Bible. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. He won't let me drown. So in this scripture that we have uh, today, it is talking about the children of Israel, the Hebrews at the time that God brought out of Egypt. So he's telling them, don't fear. Because during this time, they're going through uh, some suffering and some of uh, it is allowed by God as punishment. They have been warned. They have been warned over and over again uh, by the prophets of the time that if they don't uh, come back to God, if they don't serve him faithfully, that they will be conquered by another land. So Babylon's on their heels. They're dealing with that. And now God is saying, fear not. He's allowing them to go through the trouble, but he's saying, fear not. He's saying, I created you, old Jacob. And this is the children of Jacob, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. He said, I created thee. I formed thee, O Israel, fear not. I have redeemed thee. I bought you. I paid for you. I bought you with a price. I paid for you. I redeemed you. You are mine. That's what God is saying. You belong to me. And so when you pass through waters, I'm going to be with you. When you pass through rivers, they're not going to overflow thee, meaning they're not going to overwhelm thee. He's saying, when you walk through fire, you won't be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And uh, when we think about that, I think about the three Hebrew boys that were thrown in the fiery furnace, how God was with them, even in the fire, our fulfillment of this scripture. And they weren't even burned. They weren't even singed. They survived and were walking around. And that's the kind of protection God is telling us that he wants for us. He, If you can trust God, if we can just trust him, if we can just give him our whole heart. He's saying he won't let us drown. He won't let us drown. He won't let me drown no matter what the situation or the circumstance. And when I was young, my very first job, I would say my real job, first real job, I worked for the uh, American Red Cross. I was 16 years old and was hired during that summer when I just turned 16. And in working for the Red Cross, we had to go through a uh, basic first aid training. I had to be certified in first aid. And then I had to have some uh, safety, water safety, water safety. So I did take uh, swimming classes, beginning swimming classes. And I remember I was one time in our, in our manager, our chapter manager's pool, she was giving the classes and she was on the other side of the pool with younger folk, but I was uh, being kind of grafted in because I was the only uh, older individual in that session. But it was the, something that she was doing to work around her schedule because I wasn't prepared for water. And so I had my nephew with me. I don't remember my brothers were there, but my nephew, they were on, they were just around the edge of the pool. They were not in the pool. And I began to drift off from where she told me to be. She told me to stay in the shallow water and what I considered was the baby water. And I wanted to go out and, and swim for real. I'm just in water that I could easily stand in. So I got out of there with my older self in my mind, my grown self. And I got out there and began to panic when I realized my feet could not touch the ground anymore. And I began to panic. 
So I began to go under, needed help. So, and what was really happening was that was beginning to drown. But my nephew knew how to swim and he was younger than me. I'm about seven years older than him, six, a little more than six years, maybe six and a half years older than him. And he reached for me and pulled me to safety, pulled me up out of it. So, and that I can use that for a reference. God didn't let me drown. He didn't let me drown. My nephew even didn't let me drown. When uh, a person is drowning, that means they, when a person has drowned, they have died from inhaling water into their lungs and unable to breathe. And when you say somebody nearly drowned, a near drowning happens when they almost died from not being able to breathe. They're actually suffocating under the water. And so when you think about, when you look up the word uh, drowning, it is a transitive verb. It means to suffocate by submersion. Often we're talking about water. Uh, there's a rise in the water level. You're engaging in something deep. It's also another definition to engage oneself deeply and strenuously. And this is Webster Online also talking about uh, where you can, in that case, you can drown yourself in your work, engage deeply into it. And also another thing is uh, we talk about drowning out something, driving out uh, something such as noise or a sensation or an idea. We do it by making uh, other noises to uh, overwhelm the noise that we're hearing or whatever we want to drown out. And we we even talk about somebody drowning their sorrows, overcoming it with liquor, trying to deal with pain. Another uh, definition comes up as uh, some a synonym is overwhelm. Another, it's like drowning means to overwhelm. We get overwhelmed. They say that he's drowned in homework. He is overwhelmed in homework. The person might be saying, I have too much. And so I actually went online trying to understand some techniques that we can do to prevent drowning or what to do when you're actually drowning. And I found some information on health exchange uh, online, health exchange online. And it says, when you're drowning, keep your head up. Keep your head up and try to breathe normally because the body floats better when the lungs are full of air, but you need to keep yourself from hyperventilating. So what I was going through, my nephew had to extend his hand. I had begun to hyperventilate. The second thing you want to do is toss away anything that's weighing you down. So it gives an example, shoes, shirts, bags, whatever is on you, let it go, take it off. Now stay with me, I'm coming to a point with all of this. Another thing is to attract attention to your difficulties. That means if there are people around, you want to, with whatever strength you have, shout, do something, splash the water, get attention. But you have to have a way, be able to let somebody know that you're in trouble and you need help, trying to get them to see that they need to come and rescue you. And then if you get tired under the water, it just says you can just lay there and look at the sky. And the next part to that is stay as relaxed as possible because so this allows you to just float just float uh, because tense muscles use up more oxygen than relaxed muscles. So you want to just, just lay there and float. So those are four things that come up with what to do when you're drowning. And so let's go on back to overwhelm because I'm thinking about drowning in a sense of our day-to-day us uh, activities and suffering and challenges that we go through. Sometimes we just feel overwhelmed. We just feel uh, uh, covered completely in these situations, submerged. And sometimes you see, feels like, it seems like 
You can't find a way out. And sometimes that, that overwhelming is to overcome completely. It's crushing you. Have you ever felt it's like you're being crushed, like you're overwhelmed, like you're trying to drown, like, like in life, life is drowning you and you need relief. Some of you are overcome by grief. You Somebody has died and that is a painful thing when your loved one is crossed over uh, out of this world and you know that there's no opportunity in this life that you will see them again or be able to interact with them again or love on them again. And it could be a life cut through short, too short. So it makes you overcome with grief. Well, in our natural lives or in our day to day, the devil himself, he brings so much trouble into our lives. He, he devises plans that are designed to choke the life out of us. He wants us to give up and die, not just die. Even sometimes he's trying to make us commit suicide, take our own lives. He wants us to have eternal damnation and judgment and whatever he could do, that's what he tries to do. And he gets us feeling overwhelmed and whispers in our ear telling us, what's the use? So you think that's your thoughts. You think that's your words. That comes from the enemy himself telling us uh, what's the use. Telling us no matter what you do, it keeps getting worse. Uh, telling us that uh, every time you turn around, it's one thing or another. And that the more you try, the worse it gets. All of these are what Satan whispers in our ear. He says, I might as well die. That's, that's not your voice. That's his voice. I might as well die. I might as well give up. Well, don't fall for that lie. It's a lie from hell, and you don't have to give up. Sometimes you are just on the verge of a breakthrough, just on the verge of victory, and so that lie is formed to cause you to forfeit, cause you to self-destruct, cause you to lose out on your own. Well, you can make it. I'm here to tell you, you can make it, and things do uh, get better. It can get better. And with God's help, it will get better if you continue and keep on trusting in him. Often constant trouble is an indication that, that, that your victory is near. And so self-destruction and self-defeat um, uh, is what we have to watch out for. This occurred, if you remember the story when uh, Moses God had Moses send 12 spies into Canaan and they were to spy out the land. Well, they ended up defeating themselves by panicking and giving up. If they had just kept the faith, if they had just held on, they would have inherited the promised land. But even in that, God still had mercy because their children were able to go in, even though they couldn't, by through the judgment that was on them, through punishment for them giving up faith and giving up hope. Uh, but the, we know the story of the two, Joshua and Caleb, that did go in. So we don't want to be like that in life. It's an example. Things that happen in the, in the Bible are an example for us today. We must hold on. We must not give up. The Bible teaches us that the just shall live by faith. We must have faith. And I heard Dr. Fred Price teaching one time, and he said, have faith 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The just shall live by faith. Now, these people that had forfeited their blessing, we must remember that they are the same people that God walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. They should have known that he wasn't going to let them lose, that he'd given them a victory. He didn't let them drown when they came across the Red Sea, and he wouldn't have let them be overwhelmed by the enemies when they got into the Canaan land. He is a faithful God that didn't let them drown, hallelujah, bringing them through on dry 
land. And yes, bad things happen to good people. And we shouldn't expect things to be perfect every day. And we shouldn't expect that there won't be any trials and challenges. We must remember that we live in a fallen world. And even in Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, if you will read the whole verse, it will tell you about the suffering that and the chance that happens, good or bad, it doesn't matter. A strong or weak, it doesn't matter. Rich or poor, it reveals to us that time and chance happens to us all. Oh, yes, it does. We've seen some bad things happen to good people. Yes, we did. We saw good people die in the pandemic just like we saw the wicked die. So what did it mean? Did it mean that there was judgment on the, the good person, that the good person was evil or that, oh, why didn't God protect them? Why didn't? No, that's just scripture. We're in a fallen world dealing with time and chance. And God's mercy reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So just because a person dies young or dies early doesn't mean there was a sin factor or there was an evil factor. But this is where salvation comes in. That whether you live or die, you are victorious. And those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and meant it from their heart are safe from eternal death. They are saved. So even in death, we live, but we don't take our own lives and we keep the faith no matter what. Hallelujah. Because without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. If you can keep the faith, God won't let you drown. If you can hold on, no, no matter how overwhelming life is. Uh, God won't let you drown. He just won't do it. And so remember the tips that I gave you earlier. Um, we're going to talk about them now that when you're overwhelmed, what should you do? Number one, going back to the drowning tips, uh, keep your head up and keep on breathing. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. That means that Jesus obtained the victory so you can too. And so keep your head up and look to him. And secondly, toss away anything that's weighing you down. Hebrews 12 and one says, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. That is what we just read in the first section. But it is important to know that you can cast aside every weight in life. Cast it aside. Take it off. That burden caring about what happened in the past. You're going to have to take it off if you want to keep from drowning. That uh, rejection that you faced uh, when somebody didn't do you right or somebody didn't treat you right or they wouldn't let you in their organization or they wouldn't let you in their clique. We're going to have to cast it aside and lay it down. Those bad things that, that people did to you. Yes, you remember them, but you're going to have to take out, take it off, take it off every burden and every weight and cast it down. And then the third thing is attach, uh, attract attention to your difficulties, meaning ask for help. Uh, we've got it sometimes when we're acting out of character, that is an ask for help. And those of us who are seasoned or those of us who uh, notice those type of things, we need to begin to address those type of things not only in prayer, but ask the person if they need help or do what you can to help. Because when you ask for a ten, when you uh, ask for help, this is Galatians 6 and 2. It says, bear ye one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ, which means that uh, believers are required to respond to Christ to help from the brethren. 
And then also in the scripture, it says in Psalms, no, it's in James 5, 14. It says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And so what do we do? It says call for the elders of the church. Uh, sick means sick. So it doesn't matter whether it's physically, mentally, or emotionally. If you're sick, get help. Call for the elders of the church. Call for seasoned folks, seasoned people to come and help you. Everybody's not a gossiper. You can trust somebody. You can find somebody to ask for help. And then uh, the fourth thing is if you're tired, it said lie on your back. Just lay there. Tilt your head back as well as your eyes and look at the sky. And I want you to remember that Psalms 12, or excuse me, Psalms 121 and 1 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence comes my help, from whence cometh my help. And verse 2, Psalm 121 and 2 says, my help comes from the Lord. So if you can't do anything else, uh, just rest in him uh, and and float uh, keep your head keep your eyes to the sky keep your eyes on him that means looking i'm looking up not necessarily in the natural but i'm talking about in the spirit is metaphorically in your mind elevate yourself and keep your focus on the lord trying to stay as relaxed as possible means rest in him rest in god so Matthew eleven twenty eight says, and this is Jesus talking, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God has a remedy for your situation. God wants to help you in your time of urgency. Life can be overwhelming, but it won't overwhelm you if you put your trust in God. If you trust him, God won't let you drown. No, he won't. He won't let you drown. Habakkuk 319 says, and the Lord God is my strength. He make my feet like hind's feet. He make me to walk upon my high places. That means God will cause me. He will cause you to leap out of trouble. He'll cause you to walk above it. Are you feeling despondent or overwhelmed in your life? Well, keep your head up. That's my advice to you. Look to Jesus. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. He won't let you drown. And if you want this Jesus I'm talking about, pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I want to be in the family of God. I want this Jesus I'm hearing about. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins and help me to forgive others who've offended or done anything wrong to me. I want to be in the family of God. And Father, for those who are listening and they have been going through challenge after challenge after challenge and they don't know what to do, their backs are against the wall. What else? They've done all they can. I'm asking you to meet them in their time of urgency Give them the miracles that they need all over the world. All of those who hear the sound of my voice, send your urgent help in Jesus name. I pray. And those of you, if you've heard my voice and, uh, or if you accept it, I meant to say, if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and savior and you want to know more about him and you want to, or you want to connect with us, please go to our website and learn how you can reach out to us even send us a message in, in the contact us option. It's www.sacredtabernacle.org. And you may have to put in Riverview, Florida, sometimes when you're searching to get us to come up. We'd be so glad to help. We will respond to you.
God bless you. And remember, he won't let you drown.